to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. We welcome you today to our study of our amazing God and His tender mercy. Today we're thinking about how the mercy of God is what makes our God such an awesome God and what that means to the Christian life. And so we're glad you've joined us for our lesson today. If you haven't got your Bible, we want to encourage you to locate your Bible, find it and have it ready. Take just a moment to do that as we're going to look to the Word of God for our strength and for our encouragement today. Today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and members of uh, individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly, whether it be for worship on Sunday morning or Sunday night or for Bible study on Wednesday night in your local area. You can look that up and see what time they begin and they'd love to have you stop by their assembly. If you'd like to know more about the Bible or the church or the plan of salvation, you'll find people there who love God, who are concerned about your soul and who want to help men and women get to heaven. And so we want to encourage you to visit the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in your area. Here at the Gospel of Christ, we also want to help you in your study of God's Word. We encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. All of our lessons are available online, audio lessons, video lessons, written material, transcripts, study questions, uh, a lot of articles on Bible study material. A good host of material is available to you, and it's all free of charge. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, uh, we can make that available to you as well. You can go to our website, visit our media request form, fill out that form, and we can give you an instantaneous download of that. Or if you need a DVD or CD, you can email us, write to us, call us, fill out that form, and we'd be glad to make that available to you free of charge. And friend, if you got a Bible question that you're struggling with, contact us and we'll be happy to help you with that in any way we can to help men and women go to heaven. That's our desire. Our whole emphasis is to take the whole gospel to the whole world and we want to help men and women know God and enjoy the beauty and splendor of heaven. Today we're thinking about our awesome God and His tender mercy. That verse that we started with, it just so beautifully illustrates God's mercy. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because they are, they're new every morning. Great is God's faithfulness. When you think about the mercy of God, what kind of things come to your mind? Well, friend, when I think about mercy, I think about somebody giving grace. I think about somebody uh, allowing someone to receive something they didn't deserve. I, I even think about somebody, when I think of mercy, I think of someone being let out of maybe a bad situation, maybe even more that idea. God's mercy, it's the very reason that we're not consumed or destroyed. You know, the phrase, and this is a common one in the Bible, the phrase his mercy endures forever, talking about God, occurs about 41 times just in the Old Testament. In fact, that phrase occurs over 25 times in just one Psalm, Psalm 136. That's nearly one time per verse. Evidently, from the Bible, God's mercy is essential to His people. But what is that mercy that God gives to His people? And, and more importantly, how do I get that mercy? And how does it affect mankind. Let's consider those ideas today as we think about the mercy of our God. Let's begin by thinking about what is God's mercy. Well, friend, at the outset, I want you to see that God 
is mercy. When you think of the idea of God, when you think of the eternal divine being, I want you to tie to that the fact that God's nature is merciful. Psalm 89 verse 18, we think about the God of mercy. Uh, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3, he's spoken of as the Father of mercies. Exodus 34 verse 6, Deuteronomy 4 verse 31, again, mentions God as being merciful. Ephesians 2 verse 4, His mercy is available to His people. And so when I think about God and all the attributes that make up the nature of God, mercy is God. It is who He is. It is integrally tied to His character. But that still really doesn't help me to understand it except to know that it's God. What is mercy then? Friend, mercy, here's a great way to describe mercy. Contrast for a moment in your mind grace and mercy. Grace is when God allows us to receive what we don't deserve. Mercy is when God allows us to escape what we do deserve. When we talk about the mercy of God, we're talking about God allowing men and women who have sinned, who have fallen short, who deserve to reap the wages of sin, a way out. That's available by the mercy of God. Mercy is when God allows us to escape what we do deserve. Lamentations 3 verse 22 again, through the Lord's mercies, Listen to this, we are not consumed. What is it that halts man from going to hell? What is it that, that makes a, a way of escape for man so that he doesn't suffer eternal punishment? My friend, that road is called mercy. The mercy of God is what allows us to escape that eternal damnation that we all deserve. Uh, I want you to hear a couple of passages from the book of Nehemiah that illustrate this idea. Nehemiah chapter 9. Nehemiah talks about the mercy of God on, on a variety of occasions in the book of Nehemiah. And, and this is a beautiful picture of God's character and how it affects the Christian in his life every day. Listen to Nehemiah chapter 9, verse number 13 says this. You came down all also on Mount Sinai and spoke with them from heaven, gave them just ordinances and true laws, good statutes and commandments. Now watch Nehemiah chapter 13, verse number 22, what the Bible here says. Nehemiah says, so I contended with them and cursed them, struck some of them, pulled out their hair and made them swear by God saying, you shall not give your daughters as wives to their sons, nor take their sons for daughters. And then he goes on to say, remember the mercy of God. And in verse 29, remember them, oh my God, because they've done bad things. And then he says, remember me, oh my God, for good. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse number 30. When I think about the things that are happening in the book of Nehemiah, these people deserve God's wrath. They kept living a life of sin, but God's mercy was abundantly given to them. And so the mercy of God is when God allows us to escape what we deserve. Mercy is also when God relents, when God changes His mind, when God uh, gives us a second chance. That's also the mercy of our God. Listen to Psalm 106, verse number 45, as it speaks about God relenting, changing His mind, turning a different direction to certain things. Listen to Psalm 106, verse number 45. The Bible says, and for, for their sake, He remembered His covenant and relented, watch this, according to the multitude of His mercies. God changed His mind. God didn't do what He initially intended to do because of His mercy. Jeremiah 3 verse 12, Joel 2 verse 13. Again, God relents from doing what He promised because of His own mercy. Did you ever get, maybe as a kid you got in trouble, Maybe you got grounded. Uh, maybe your kids said, go to your room and, and think about what, you, or your parents said, go to your room, think about what you've done, and in a little bit, you're going to get a paddling. And they went back, and, and maybe you did what they said, and they went back and thought about that, 
and they let you go. They didn't, they didn't ground you, or maybe they didn't, the punishment wasn't as severe, or they changed their mind about that. God's mercy causes him to relent from the punishment that one deserves. And so when we think about his mercy, how important that is to God's nature himself. You know, something interesting about mercy also is that mercy and truth in the Bible are linked. Here's a beautiful passage. I want you to notice in your Bible, Psalm 85, verse number 10. The truth is always tied to mercy, and Psalm 85, verse 10 puts it in a, a, a rather graphic way. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed. There's the joining of certain ideas into a couple almost here, and mercy and truth go hand in hand. You can't have mercy without obedience to God's truth. Psalm 25, verse 10, Psalm 89, verse number 14. But friend, I want you to hear this. Mercy is so integral to receiving forgiveness. There can be no forgiveness. There can be no hope. There can be no joy of salvation without God intervening with His mercy. Listen to what David says. You know, David in Psalm 51, he really messed up with Bathsheba. He made a lot, he did a lot of things that were not right. He committed adultery, he lied, he had a man murdered, a whole host of sins. And when David appeals to God for forgiveness, listen to the very first words out of his mouth. Have mercy. Upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. And so th th throughout the Bible, you'll see the connection between mercy and forgiveness. When God's mercy intervenes, forgiveness can be found to those who trust in Him and put God's will above all else. And for in Jesus Christ, He's the prime example of mercy and forgiveness. Jesus, not only did God relent from the punishment that He was initially, that, that all men deserved, but God instead in His mercy allowed His Son to receive that punishment. Listen to 2 Corinthians 5, 21. God made Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf. Uh, Isaiah 53, verse 4, He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. By His stripes we are healed. He tasted death for every man. Hebrews 2, verse 9, He's the propitiation for our sins, not for our sins alone, for the sins of the whole world. Isaiah, or 1 John 2, verses 1 and 2. And so when you think about God relenting, please understand that His mercy placed that punishment. His grace and His mercy placed that punishment on His own Son so that we could have the forgiveness and hope of eternal life. Let's then take a moment to think about what a great blessing and benefit God's tender mercy is. You see, my friend, it's the mercy of God that compels Him to give salvation to His people. Psalm 119, verse 41, salvation is through mercy. Isaiah 55, verse 3, Acts 13, verse 34, God's mercy is the motivating factor that compels that salvation to be available. You know, when you think of God and you think about His mercy, friend, I want you to hear this. The, the Bible says God doesn't want anybody to be lost, right? 1 Timothy 2, verse 4, God wants all men to be saved. 2 Peter 3, verse 9, God doesn't want anybody to be lost. And so the heart of God is, He wants everybody to be saved. Nobody to go to hell. Does that mean there aren't going to be? That's not the idea. But God's mercy intervenes and compels Him to give that salvation, to make that salvation available to mankind. But you know, as you think about the benefits of mercy, one of the great benefits is, it brings comfort into the Christian's life. Look in your Bible. I want you to see Psalm 119. And I want you to notice what the Bible says in verse number 76. I want you to see the connection between God's mercy and comfort. David says, or the psalmist says, Let I pray 
your merciful kindness be for my comfort according to your word to your servant. Friend, God's mercy makes us have comfort, gives us comfort in our life, knowing that God's not looking to punish. He relents from that punishment, and He's made a way of escape in Jesus Christ. You see, it's Christians. We're the one. Christians are saved by the mercy of God. Titus 3, verse 5, we are saved in God's mercy. That's what brings and compels and makes that salvation available. Christians, we trust in the mercy of God. I can't trust in myself for salvation. I can't trust in other men. I can't trust in, in other books of men. But hear what we can. Listen to what the Christian can trust in for salvation. Listen to Psalm 13, verse number 5. But I have trusted in your mercy, my heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Instead of trusting in men and other things, Christians trust in God's mercy, that God has promised He's going to relent and that He will do that. You see, it's mercy then that, that gives me hope. We have a living hope by the mercy of God. 1 Peter 1 verse 3, Psalm 33, verse number 18. And friend, the mercy of God never fails. We, we mentioned it in Psalm 136. His mercy endures forever. And that psalm alone, that phrase is mentioned 25 times, 41 in the whole Old Testament. His mercy endures forever. What's that mean? It's never going to fail. On the day of judgment, God is not going to go back and change His mind. God has already promised He will relent what, he, what, he, what men deserve because of their sin in Jesus Christ. And the mercy of God brings complete fullness to my life in the hope of salvation in Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to think then for just a moment about how that affects my life and what I do every day. Christian living ought to be viewed in the mercy of God. Listen to these words. As I live my life, I want to live it in view of that mercy God has extended. Romans 12, 1 and 2, Paul says it this way. I beg you therefore, watch this now, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. As Paul starts out that beautiful passage about real Christian commitment and dedication, what's the motivating factor? I beg you, by the mercies of God. Friend, the fact that God has been so merciful, so good, so many times in my life where I deserved the consequences of my action and God has allowed me to escape that. Friend, you just can't hardly plumb the depths of the riches of God's mercy in Jesus Christ. In fact, when the psalmist thought about that, he would often praise God for His mercy. The mercy of God makes God praiseworthy. Psalm 89, verse 1, uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 34, Psalm 115, verse 1, the psalmist would say, We praise you for your mercy. God's mercy is something that we ought to rejoice about. They ought to pray about. They ought to sing about. They ought to preach about. And that we ought to make us want to fall down and worship before the Almighty God in every way. But you know, Christians need, we need every day, we need the mercy of God, and that's something we pray for. Look at Psalm 86. When, when we pray to God, what's some of the things we ought to pray for? The psalmist prayed for God's mercy, and friend, I'll assure you, we should as well. Listen to Psalm 86, verse number 3. Here's what David said. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I cry to you all day long. Friend, we appeal today. We appeal to the mercy of God. We appeal that that mercy will help us to overcome the challenges and problems and, and will forgive us of our mistakes that we make that are not right. One of the great things about God's mercy is that it follows the faithful. 
Psalm 23, a beautiful psalm about walking through the valley of the shadow of death, and one who sits at the table of righteousness, mercy and peace. The Bible says they're going to follow that person. Those who want to follow God, those are some of the benefits they're going to have. But you know, one of the ways that we find mercy is through prayer at the throne of God. Listen to these words. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we might find mercy and that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We obtain mercy at the throne of grace. When we pray and when we approach God, especially with a penitent heart and a penitent spirit, and as we pray to God to overcome the problems of life, mercy is given to those who have that attitude. But friend, there's something about mercy that we also want to mention here. And as we think about these ideas, let's realize mercy is reciprocal. That means the way I give it to others, the way I relent from punishing others, the way I can forgive others and, and, and let others out of a bad situation, maybe when they've even done me wrong, mercy is reciprocal. What do we mean? Open your Bible to James chapter 2. That's James chapter 2, and I want you to look in verse number 13. Look in James chapter 2 about the reciprocal nature of God's mercy that we also must extend to others. The Bible records these words in James 2 verse 13. For judgment is without mercy to the one who shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Do you remember the story about the unjust servant. Uh, he went to the judge, I believe it's in Luke 18, he went to the judge, he begged off on his accounts. Uh, the, the master let him off of those accounts, and as soon as he was let off of those accounts, he went and found some other servant who had borrowed money from him, and he dealt harshly with that man, made him pay, took him to the court's idea. Although he received mercy and was forgiven, he couldn't extend that to others. Friend, that's a, that's a picture of how we don't need to live. If God has been merciful to me, and He has, He has relented from the punishment I deserve. He's allowed me to escape that on multiple occasions. I need to extend mercy to others as well. Are we saying that's a license of sin or we ought to go along with sin or put up with sin? That's not the idea. But when people change, when people turn, we extend mercy. We want to give them a second chance. Aren't you glad? God gave you a second chance. If anyone is, listen to these verses. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all has become new. If we're a child of God, we now have every spiritual blessing. Ephesians 1, 3. The old, the past, the things we've done before, that's all been wiped away. I got a second chance in Jesus Christ. And so if we believe that, if we understand that, if we appreciate that, what does Matthew 7 verse 12 say? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I don't want people to treat me unkind or mean. I, I, I'm thankful for second chances and I'm thankful for the mercy and grace of God. Therefore, I want to reciprocate that to others as well. And so, friend, we bring things full circle today as we think about our amazing God and His tender mercy. Let's close with the passage we began by thinking about. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning, great is your faithfulness. The compassion and mercy of God, like the sun coming up every morning, the compassion and mercy of God is new toward His people. I'm probably going to make mistakes. I'm going to possibly do things that are not right, and so are you. I, I want to live right. I want to do right, but sometimes because the flesh is weak, we all give in to things that we shouldn't. I don't want to take advantage of God's mercy and grace, but how thankful I am for that. 
the mercy and grace that is only found in Jesus Christ. Friend, we ask you today, have you accepted God's mercy? Have you accepted that and have you submitted to God's will? Mercy and truth, remember, are coupled together. Psalm 85, verse number 10. Have you obeyed the truth so that you can receive the mercy of God? Jesus said, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. John chapter 8, verse 32. We now know what truth is. Jesus said, sanctify them by your truth, your word is truth. The Bible is God's truth in written form. We can know it, we can live it, and we can be free from a life of sin. And so we ask you today, have you become a Christian? Have you put aside the ways of evil and turned to God to receive His mercy? Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and the Savior of the world? In Acts chapter 8, as Philip is speaking with the Ethiopian eunuch, they're traveling in that chariot. And as they, in the distance, as they see water, and he realizes what he's got to do to be a Christian, he says these words to Philip. Here's water. What hinders me? And Philip says, If you believe with all your heart, you may. He says, I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He believed that. He made the good confession. No doubt he's willing to make changes in his life and repent. Acts 3, verse 19, they stopped the chariot. They both got down out of the chariot. They both went down in the water, and he baptized him, and they went on their way rejoicing. Friend, have you done what the Ethiopian eunuch did? Have you believed in Jesus, confessed him as Savior, turned from a life of sin, and been immersed in water? so that you can have the forgiveness of your sins and the mercy of God. If you've not done that, in view of our amazing God and His tender mercy, we encourage you to do that today. If as a Christian, maybe there are struggles you face, maybe sometimes you just feel like giving up or throwing in the towel, Friend, appeal to God's mercy. Don't give in. Don't give up. And we hope you'll join us next time as we study more about our amazing God. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.